tonight, but we came to celebrate and to honor the life of a great God man, one of the most prolific preachers to ever walk the face of the earth. Come on, I need you to bless God for the life and now the legacy of Bishop James L. Whitehead. Come on, bless his name. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Please remain standing as we now begin the services for today. And we will begin with a hymn of comfort followed by the invocation from Superintendent Shannon Robbins. Say amen in that order, please. most gracious and heavenly father lord we thank you tonight lord we thank you for your grace and your mercy lord we thank you for even a time such as this oh lord we just bless you for you are the one and only true and living god the beginning and the ending lord we magnify you right now lord we lift you up in the mighty name of jesus lord we thank you lord you said give thanks in all things and right now lord we thank you we thank you for your grace we thank you for your mercy, Lord. We thank you for the life of Bishop James L. Whitehead, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, for each and every word he preached. Lord, each and every, every blessing, Lord, had he lifted up to your name. Lord, we thank you for this gospel preacher today, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you have your way tonight. Have your way in this place. Have your way in our hearts. Have your way in our minds.
Edge Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we celebrate tonight, Lord. We celebrate, Lord, each and every life that he touched, Lord. We thank you. We thank you tonight, Lord. Lord, we thank you for his family tonight, Lord. We ask that you will touch him. Lift them up, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Strengthen them, Lord, as they move forward in you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Once again, Lord, we just want to thank you. We just want to thank you. We just want to thank you. We want to thank you tonight, Lord, for everything that you have done for us, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord, for every word that came off of his lips, Lord, that magnified you, Lord. We thank you tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And as we go into the furtherance of this service, Lord, we ask that you will bless each and every one, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, lead and guide us into all truth, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. These are all blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Everyone say thank God. Thank God. Amen. Let the church say amen. Remain standing as we now prepare to hear our Old Testament scripture observance along with the New Testament observance. And that will be done by Superintendent Gary Boyd, followed by Pastor Darrell Spires. And then following him, we'll continue with the program and the affirmation of faith will be read by Superintendent Barry Pelt. And then after the affirmation of faith, you might be seated and the choir will give us a selection. Say amen. I'll be reading Psalm 62, 5 through 8. My soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is in him. He is only my rock and my salvation. He is my defense, I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts before him. God is our refuge. Selah. I'll be reading in your hearing, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in a cloud to meet the Lord in the air 
and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. God bless you. Amen. Our affirmation of faith. I will affirm our faith, and I'm asking that the congregation would state what it is that we believe. We affirm our faith in the Bible. We affirm our faith in God. We affirm our faith in the blessed hope. We affirm our faith in repentance and salvation. We affirm our faith in Jesus Christ. We affirm our faith in the Holy Ghost. We affirm our faith in sanctification. We believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit by whose indwelling the Christian is enabled to live a holy and separated life in this present world. Amen.
It's all right to clap your hands and praise God. Come on, if you're leaning on him, come on and praise him. Come on, if you're leaning on Jesus in this hour, come on and praise God. Hallelujah. Praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, I don't know about you, but that's how I made it. That's how I made it. Leaning on Jesus. When it gets rough every now and then, I look up towards the hills from which cometh my help. Thank you, thank you. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nobody like him. There's nobody like Jesus. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. Say, there's nobody like Jesus. Got to be the wrong neighbor. Look at somebody else and say, there's nobody like Jesus. people look at you they look at you and they think you got it all together they look at you based on your academia they look at you based on your title your position they look at you based on where you live what you drive and what you do but little do they know that if it had not been for the Lord I don't know about you, I made it leaning on Jesus. When I couldn't lean on nobody else, I was leaning on Jesus. When everything else, amen, was taken out from under me, I was leaning on Jesus. 
On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Give this choir a great big hand. Awesome job, choir. Awesome job. We salute the Whitehead Memorial, Church of God in Christ, the Saint City, Church of God in Christ, and the Michigan Southwest Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Come on, clap your hands for all of them tonight. What a great loss for all of us. My heart certainly is touched. I have a, a number of thoughts and emotions that are going through my mind and that's going throughout my body right now in the loss of someone who was more than just a great preacher and certainly he was a great preacher. If you were to put together a Mount Rushmore for Kojic preachers who have lived and gone, you would have men like Bishop Charles Harrison Mason. His face would be mounted on that mountain. Bishop G.E. Patterson, his face would be mounted on that mountain. You have men like Bishop F.D. Washington, his face would be mounted on that mountain. Men like Bishop Ithiel Clemens, his face would be mounted on that mountain. And the list goes on and on. But right smack in the middle will be Bishop James L. Whitehead. But it was so much more than that to me. It was a friend a mentor, a confidant. He epitomized the scripture when it says we have 10,000 instructors, but not many fathers. And certainly I understand you don't have many men that you come across in life like Bishop Whitehead. I thank God that I shared with him how much I loved him and appreciated, appreciated him while he could hear it. Many people know him as a great preacher, but I knew Bishop Whitehead as a great prophet. He spoke many things that has come to pass. He was a guardian angel for Don W. Shelby. I'll never forget him. I'll never forget him. We would talk on the phone sometimes so long until I was telling some of the bishops in the back that he almost felt like we backslid because he was on the phone for so many hours. He said, Shelby, man, it's two hours, man. We've been on this phone, man, way too long. I said, yes, sir, Bishop. <laughs> and, and we wasn't doing anything but talking about God and his love for the church. I'm going to miss him. He took a chance on a little small preacher who came here from Saginaw and started a church in Ypsilanti. And Bishop John Henry Sheard one day called me on the telephone and he said, Bishop Shelby, after the passing of Superintendent Paul, the Lord has laid upon my heart to place you as the new superintendent. Man, I was scared as I don't know what. I didn't know what I was going to do. Holy Spirit said, go and see Pastor Whitehead. So he's a part of that district. Let him know you need his support. I went to go and see him. And he was in his office. And secretary or whoever was there told him, said, um, Pastor Shelby is here. He didn't know me, never met me before. 
and he, he stayed in the office, and, and I just sat outside of his office, and I was talking with one of the members outside of his office, and he was eavesdropping on our conversation. And as I was talking, I, I told one of his members, I said, you know what? I said, I'm from Saginaw. I said, well, he said, they said, well, you know, we, we never, you know, you didn't grow up around here, did you? I said, no, I'm from Saginaw. But you know what? Mother Whitehead was very close to me because as a young man, I would attend all of her purity class events here in Michigan. I said, as a matter of fact, I was voted Mr. Purity. And when I said that, his ears went up. Then I said, you know what? I said, I'm going to tell you. I said, I was voted Mr. Purity so much until I got it down in my bones. And they looked at me and said, yeah, P is for purity. U is for unity. R is for righteousness. I is for. T is for. Y is for. So join the. Of the and man, when I did that, this big man came running out of his office, grabbed me. He said, man, you from the purity class? I said, yes, sir. He said, man, you just said the magic word. I said, I did. I said, well, I got some more. And I did the purity class chant. Let down for purity reign. In the hearts of every boy and girl. Mr. and Mrs. Let purity. Let purity. Let purity. What? 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 Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Give God a hand, praise everybody. And I won his heart with the purity song. And ever since that day, every year he would come to my church, sit in my service on a Sunday morning, the, the small storefront preacher, and he said, Pastor Shelby, I need this city to see that you have the blessing of a father. And he sat in my service. And he supported me from that day all the way until his death. I'll never forget Bishop Whitehead. Well, those are my remarks. Now we're going to have some remarks and acknowledgments from civic and community leaders. And we're asking that you would take two minutes, not two Kojic minutes. Take two AME minutes. And so Deacon Calvin Toon is going to come. And then after Deacon Toon, then we are going to be in the hands of the Master of Ceremonies for the second portion of this program, a dear friend to Bishop Whitehead, I'm one of our fathers here in the state of Michigan, Bishop Philip Jackson. Say amen in that order, please. Out of God who's head of my life, to this great sainted man of God and this great opportunity today. As you all can imagine, we have been overwhelmed with responses for this great man, and we are going to just read a few. If Madam Chair Virgil Rollins could please assist me with this, as she comes, I'm going to acknowledge. 
some of the tributes. To the family of Bishop James L. Whitehead, Jr., on behalf of the late Bishop Willie B. Toon and the Toon family, with deepest condolences, we offer our prayers and support during the loss of a great man and leader. We are both thankful and blessed to have shared the past 38 years of fellowship with your family. We are appreciative of the years of working together in Michigan Southwest Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction and are looking forward to the future as we continue to serve the Lord and his church. Bishop James L. Whitehead Jr. was a great man of God, a humble servant, and a divine leader, and a wonderful friend. The way in which Bishop James L. Whitehead Jr. lived his life serves as an example for all to follow. His legacy will serve, his legacy will live in our hearts forever. May God grant you comfort and peace during this time of great loss. With love, the family of Bishop Willie B. Toon. To the family of Bishop James L. Whitehead Jr., the men of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated, New Omega Chapter, would like to express our heartfelt sympathy in the wake of your loss. The, past, the passing of Bishop James L. Whitehead Jr. has touched us very deeply. We are comforted in the fact that being absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Bishop James L. Whitehead Jr. lived his life in a fashion that the men of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated are honored to have witnessed and blessed to be a part of. Bishop James Whitehead Jr., hard work, dedication, and commitment to God's people is nothing short of the outstanding and admirable. It is our honor to recognize a man, although not a member of the fraternity, he embodied the four cardinal principles of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated, manhood, scholarship, perseverance, and uplift. Rest well, sir. On behalf of the Sheriff of Wayne County, to the family of Bishop James L. Whitehead Jr., it is with deep regret that I have learned of Bishop Whitehead's recent passing. The death of their loved one is never easy, and words cannot express the sorrow I wish to convey to you and your family during this time of bereavement. The legacy of Bishop Whitehead is yours to continue, and I pray you will find some peace and comfort within your hearts. On behalf of the men and women of Wayne County Sheriff's Office, our thoughts and prayers are with you. Sincerely, Wayne County Sheriff Raphael Washington. Give honor to all the bishops and to all the supervisors, to Mother Molly Whitehead and family, to my pastor, Bishop Earl Jerome Wright, Jr. I, this is a sad moment. This is really, what a great spirit. You know, when I first moved to Detroit, and uh, my family lived in Ann Arbor and Ypsilanti. They were members of, they're members of White Memorial Church of God in Christ. And they, bring, they told me to make sure that my family, the real McCoys from Benton Harbor, who love this family, who have stood with us when we had loss, that they are with, the, with you, Mother Whitehead. They're with the family. And I just want to say, Greta Miller is very sad today because Bishop Whitehead served our late bishop. He was his right arm. And we're going we're gonna to miss him. And I just want to say that I'm here because I am... Church of God in Christ, and I hope you understand that I may take a little bit more time than two minutes. <laughs> because although I travel all across this country, and, and I was just at the White House, and, and um, but I know that where my roots are, and it's with Kojic. And I just want to take some time to just recognize, because he not only were in the church, he engaged in community. He was a pillar of this community, not only in Washtenaw County, but in Wayne County. And they loved Bishop Whitehead. I mean, when they heard, I got so many calls, 
and I didn't even have to call some of the folk to get these. The governor was the first. And, the, and she sent her condolence. And in and, 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 and the state of Michigan, a lot of the state reps and the state senators sent their proclamation and resolution. So I'm just going to just recognize the governor, Mother Whitehead, even in Bishop's condition, he served God. He was doing the work of God. And we know, we got assurance from above that he is in God's will. He's at what they call the almighty address, which is in God's will. Bishop James Whitehead, let it be known that is, it is with genuine gratitude and reminisce that we remember Bishop James L. Whitehead, loving husband, father, grandfather, and public servant. I am grateful for this opportunity to join the family and many friends of Bishop James Whitehead as we honor as many admiral accomplishment and outstanding involvement in the Christian church. Bishop Whitehead was one of the greatest scholars, theologians, and preachers of the gospel of our time of regional, national, and global scale, earning him a wide array of awards. Among these included the general board, the, was ele general board and the installation of the National Church of Officials. During the fall general assembly of consecrated, during the 103 holy convocation in 2015, he received a unanimous recommendation to be jurisdictional prelate of Michigan Southwest Jurisdiction Church of God in Christ. And a special tribute, therefore, this document is signed and dedicated in the remembrance of the legacy of the late Bishop James Lee Whitehead as a strong figure in the community and made a health of happiness and his accomplishment richly married with his family always. <laughs> Testimonial resolution, Bishop James L. Whitehead, and I'll just do the resolve. The Office of Councilman Scott Benson and the Detroit City Council honors the life of Bishop James L. Whitehead, Jr. He was widely recognized as an exceptional scholar, theologian, a preacher of the gospel, a loving father. The, his legacy impact will be forever remembered. May God bless and comfort your family during this difficult time. In the, in the sake of time, we are going to acknowledge two more. One is from the state of Michigan, signed by the Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist. And I will read just the special tribute. Therefore, this document is signed and dedicated to Bishop James Lee Whitehead, Jr. as a symbol of our gratitude for his life of love, compassion, and service. Although our state has lost an exceptional father, leader, and friend, his contributions to our state and the family will be cherished for generations to come. And another proclamation from the uh, Charter Township of Ypsilanti, signed by all the supervisors of Ypsilanti. Thank you. To this awesome family and to this quorum of elders, bishops, men of God, all of you that are here, we're honored to be here even at this occasion for our dear friend and brother, our bishop, James Whitehead. 
as many of us know in the Church of God in Christ, we have we are multitasked. We have district meetings, jurisdictional meetings, and a lot of meetings going on at the same time. And for the sake of time and being able to fulfill some of the obligations that some of us have, we're going to ask our Sister Pearl Hill, the wife of General Boyd, the assistant secretary of our General Boyd, to come and have words. Following her will be that of our treasurer, a, a president of the trustee board, Bishop Dwight Walls. Let's hear him in this order. God bless you, Mother Pearl. Thank you, Bishop Jackson. I'm going to ask all the Michigan Canadian bishop's wives to please stand. Whether you're widow wife, you're an auxiliary bishop's wife, or you're a jurisdictional wife, please stand. Lady Molly, your sister connection, we're here to support you and your family on tonight. And we want to say that you have our prayers, our love, our condolence for you and the family. Our secretary of the Bishop's Wife Circle, she's here to read the condolence on tonight. God bless you. Thank you. I'm going to ask uh, Lady Shelby to come up and stand with us at this time. Church of God in Christ Incorporated, Michigan, Ontario, Bishop's Wives Circle. Lady Molly Whitehead, President. Lady Pearl Hill, Co-President. Mother Diane Bogan, Secretary. And Lady Dorothy Duncan, Treasurer. March 15th, 2023. Condolence to Lady Molly Whitehead and the entire Whitehead family. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, 2 Timothy 4, 7 through 8. Lady Whitehead and family, today at this tender time, we share in your sorrow and celebrate with you Bishop James Whitehead's remarkable life and his contribution to the Lord's Church. We, the Michigan Ontario Bishop's Wives Circle, of which you serve as our leader along with Lady Pearl Hill, are sincerely praying for you that God will bring peace and comfort to you now and in the days to come. You were an example of a prudent wife, one that honored her husband and supported him in every way possible. And so today, we love, we honor, and we celebrate you and your family. We esteem Bishop Whitehead as an extraordinary preacher of the gospel, an example of what he taught and believed according to God's word. Times and special days will not be the same without his presence as your beloved husband, dear father, loving grandfather, brother, relative, and friend, neither with the O.T. Jones Institute and certainly the Michigan Southwest Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Finally, it is certain that he stood the course honoring his assignment as he went forth preaching and teaching everywhere, the Lord working with him and confirming the word with signs and following. Revelation 14 and 13 says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. You have our prayers prayerfully submitted, Lady Pearl here, President, and we will have the written document along with a contribution for you on tomorrow. God bless you. give out and respect today to our presiding bishop, Bishop J. Drew Sheard, 
members of the general board, Bishop Hankerson, member of the general board, and to all the bishops that are here, to all the supervisors that are here, we give respect to you as well. And to the Whitehead family, I'm here tonight to represent the Tri-County Ministerial Alliance where our president was our brother, the Bishop James L. Whitehead. If I could just take a personal privilege for one minute, uh, if it's all right with the set man of this house, Bishop Shelby, Bishop Whitehead, um, this is a hard night, it's a hard time, and we're praying for Mother Whitehead and the Whitehead family. Uh, and I don't see this facetiously. I could have recommended somebody else. Because when you talk about people like Bishop Whitehead, it's none like him, none. Bishop Whitehead was one of the greatest. I said one of the greatest. One of the greatest. Preachers, orators, writers of all time. And I loved Bishop Whitehead. He often said that he didn't have any uh, biological brothers. And he would look for brothers, men that he would call brothers. And I'm glad that I was one of his brothers. Sometimes Bishop Whitehead would call me at 6 a.m. I didn't say p.m. I said a.m. And would say, Dwight, what are you doing? And I was set up and would just say nothing absolutely nothing and he said let me just talk to you for a moment and we had so many wonderful times together with Bishop Hankerson and Bishop Shelby and myself we spent a lot of time on the phone and um, Bishop Whitehead in in so many words was really one of the greatest of all times the O.T. Jones Institute In one of the elections that I was being uh, put in office, the lady sitting next to me said, uh, the speaker was Bishop Whitehead. And she said, can this man preach? And I looked to my right, I looked to my left. I said, you just hold on for just a little while longer and then you tell me if he can preach. And he totally, with the help of God, wipe the church out. And then she nudged me and said, he can preach. Bishop Whitehead, I love you. And I was really wrestling with this news that he had went on to be with the Lord. I've lost so many friends. Almost everybody that I really love are gone. My brothers are all gone except for one. Everybody's gone. Bishop Whitehead is now gone, and I was wrestling with that, and the Spirit of the Holy Ghost said, he is not dead. He's asleep. And some glad morning, when this life is over, we'll fly away to be with the Lord. He gave my son a chance. He called me and said, I have eight jobs that I'm doing, pastoring two churches. And he said, can I borrow one of your sons? And we sent Dion and his wife, who's a master organist, to uh, North End Church of God in Christ. And he gave my son a chance. He was in two jurisdictions at one time. Who can do that? but a Bishop Whitehead. So Bishop Whitehead, we're going to miss you. But I just know that if we live right, heaven belongs to us that walk uprightly with the Lord. He served us as the president of the Tri-County Ministerial Alliance 
where we have 30 or 40 churches in our area that are Church of God in Christ. And he was our president, and uh, he served us well. And we have, if all of the pastors and members of the Tri-County Ministerial Alliance would stand, I'm going to ask all of you to stand. And I think we have a little, uh, we have a gift. If you could bring me that gift now. Somebody say, your gift will make room for you. If Elder Powell would come, and as we stand all over this house, we want to present to Mother Whitehead a love gift that would just help you feel a little better. And I'm going to tell you sometimes, when I'm broke, and I get a little money in my hands, <laughs> it just makes me feel Somebody nudge your neighbor and say, I feel better <laughs> when I got a little something in my hand. So Mother Whitehead, I know the jurisdiction is going to miss him. Whitehead is going to miss him. Saint City is going to miss him. And you are going to miss him because you was his darling wife. Lo, these many years. And then he had one sister, La Barbara. And we're not going to forget Sister La Barbara Whitehead and his wonderful daughters and his son in love and the son over there. Let's just say Elder Jack Whitehead Jr. Let's give the Whitehead family. Come on, let's give the Whitehead family a standing ovation. Let's thank God for the Whitehead family. Whitehead Memorial, St. City, Churches of God in Christ and... Southwest Michigan, second jurisdiction of Michigan. We present now a love gift. You give it to her. May God bless you. Thank you for this space. Thank you for this opportunity. And thank you for this time. Thank you, Bishop Walls, and to all of the Tri-County pastors and elders that are here. You know, I was sitting here and I'm saying to myself, perhaps somebody saw the crowd gathering and they just came in and did not know what was going on. But we want you to know that you just came into the midst of greatness. We have one of the greatest preachers, potentator, theologians that have walked this side of heaven. And we're thankful to God for loaning him to us. Somebody said, what is a theologian? Sometimes a theologian is a person that not only walk with God, we talk with God. He knows God, knows the word. And not only does he know the word, word like when you're talking about Enoch walking with God. And the scriptures say he was not. And that portion of the scripture is where the theologian jumps in and know where he went and describe the place where he went and describe the place where God is taking us. This is the powerful, was a powerful man that knew the word of God, connect the Old Testament scriptures with the new and show us Jesus Christ and him crucified. And so he's going to be missed. But please, ma'am, please, sir, don't lose out on hope because after this God has something great in store even for you and I we look to see him again am I right somebody though it may be a sad occasion today but I'm looking for the day that we can all rejoice together on the other side we're going to hear it this time from have from Whitehead Memorial and Saint City, the board of director, or di I'm sorry, the board of deacons and trustees. We have the Department of Women, the elders and the ministers, and we're going to have a church resolution by Dr. Martha Taylor. Can we come in that order, please?
Praise the Lord, saints. My name is Roy Mason, Deacon Mason of Deacon of the White Hill Church. Me, I, me and my wife came to Michigan in '63, and uh, Pastor was Ella uh, Whitehead Senior. I got saved there. And I've been there ever since I've been here. I thank God, I thank God I was, for the service that I received through the Whitehead family. All I can say is nothing but righteousness and righteousness here and righteousness there and righteousness here. They're great leaders, they're great teachers, and they bring love. They love you. They, they don't study you love. They, they show you that they love you. Oh, but the, uh, it's, the devil will try to make you feel like, well, what, 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 what can I, what, what they, they ain't doing nothing. But you just follow, follow the lead and you'll find out what they're doing. They're, they're great leaders for you, lead you in the right way. Now, I'm from Mississippi. And I'm, I'm 92 years old. And uh, <laughs> and you know, if I'm that old, you know, I came just off the edge of slavery. <laughs> but I thank God, thank God, uh, how that I learned to follow the leadership yes. of, 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 of who they have in office of the church. Uh, because... They're not there on their own. They're there because God allowed them to be there. That's right. See, we, we do a lot of things and sell a lot of things, but we can do nothing on our own. I mean, even, even when we are in, of the world, it's God that's allowing us to do certain things. But it's good to have teachers like the whitehead. I can talk about whitehead because that's what who, who I was saying. They have leads like the whitehead to bring you out from among those that are not like uh, they should be. I thank God for how they taught me how to love and treat one another, how to be a good husband and how to be a good wife, uh, for my wife to be a good wife. They taught us together. And I thank God for the leadership that a bishop, a celebrity his senior gave, and that let me know that his son came up behind him and, he, and took up the... Uh, and follow, follow after his dad. And that's what we need to do as parents, set a good example for our children, that they fall in our footsteps and follow righteousness, serve God, because life is not about us. Lord didn't make us for ourselves. He made us that we might be a vessel that uh, he could use to his glory. So we have to thank God for the opportunity that he gives us to serve him Thank God for the opportunity that he gives us to be one of those that cares enough to bring you, bring your word unto you that you come out of the sins of the world and be saved and serve God according to his purpose. Ella Whitehead Jr. was a, a, a very good pastor, and I saw him go from, a, from, from school up to pastor and now up to, to be a bishop. And all these things. I mean, I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. I can't say nothing bad about him. All I can say is that he was a righteous man, and he served the Lord according to his purpose. Pray for me. Amen. <laughs> thank you. God bless you. From the deacons and the trustees, and now our church mother is coming, Mother Mason. There she is. Go ahead. To represent from the women's department of Whitehead Memorial. We have a great team of women, both young and old. I told my pastor on last year, I said, Pastor, 
you know you don't have any. The most people you have now is senior. You got two classes. Um, you got the 60s and the 70s, and you got the 80s and the 90s. <laughs> but we all are senior. We got young seniors, and we got elder seniors. And I am in the elder seniors, and I'm very thankful. I thank God for my pastor, Bishop Whitehead. I have known him when I came to Michigan. He would just, uh, I think it is first or second year of college. And when he would come home, our house, the Mason house, we lived in an arbor at the time. And we call it the house beside the road because it served for the saints of the Lord. He said, wash their feet and feed them. We did it. He would come in, take a nap, and get out and hit the streets for the young people. He was dedicated to them wholehearted. In and out, he was there. And I'm happy to say many of you all. I also was his Sunday school teacher. Praise the Lord. I was able to that teach him, and I tell them a lot of time. I say, you remember when I used to teach you, and, I, and so now I got the results that is the cream of the crop, you teaching me and showing me how to live. The Whitehead family, they knows that as the Masons, they love them. From dad, Whitehead, we housed him. Mother Whitehead, we, we housed her. Sister Barbara Whitehead, also every Thanksgiving, they would be at our house. And I told Pastor, he says, too many of us, Mother Mason. I said, we want you to have dinner with us. So he and his family, his daughters, his son, his grandbabies, all of them, they came. And we was happy to do it. I'd like to know, let you know that the women from Whitehead Memorial and St. City, they love our pastor and our pastor wife. We love the family. We weren't selfish and just love the pastor. We love the family. And we supported them 100%. God bless you, Mother. Mother Mason, let's say amen to Mother Mason. Now we're having our elders, our elders are coming briefly, I'm going to ask you that you would please remember what we're asking for the two minute limitation so that we're able to allow this family to leave early tonight because tomorrow is going to be a very stressful and full day. God bless you. Come right on. This is not one of the elders either. Can we say praise the Lord? I stand before you on this day that the Lord has made to allow us to join the home-going celebration with the angels in heaven when God called Bishop James L. Whitehead's name. When I look back over my life and I begin to think about Bishop Whitehead as my pastor, my counselor, my spiritual father, my bishop, my friend. I can truly say that I have been blessed and I have a testimony. I remember when Bishop James L. Whitehead Jr. was placed at the Beverly Road Church of God in Christ by Bishop John Seth Bailey in December of 1972. I remember the first message he preached because I felt it was just what our church needed in having lost our pastor. And what I needed personally in what I was going through at that time in my life. He preached the 23rd Psalms, the Lord is my shepherd. Bishop began at that time what he continued to do 
over the last 50 plus years. And that is to preach the word of God that seemed directly targeted for me and you, St. City and Whitehead, and your needs during that period of your life. I understand better now that I understood it better by and by, that God is the one who directed his messages just for me and just for you. God needed someone to care for his flock, so he chose Bishop James L. Whitehead, Jr. The reason God chose Bishop Whitehead was not because of the good, his good looks, his perfect hair, his stylish clothes, but because he knew Bishop James L. Whitehead Jr.'s life in serving God would be a reflection of God's love for the ordinary people. He knew this shepherd, Bishop James L. Whitehead Jr., would preach to us the word of God. He knew this shepherd, Bishop James L. Whitehead Jr., would gather the sheep in the early morning and the late nights to provide food of wisdom and words of encouragement. He knew this shepherd, Bishop James L. Whitehead Jr., would pray for healing power and lay hands on the sick and the shut-in and they would recover. He knew this shepherd, Bishop James L. Whitehead Jr., would never get weary of the word of God while helping others along the way. He knew the shepherd, Bishop James L. Whitehead Jr., would give these proclamated instructions to all of his sheep in the pasture. Those instructions are this. Later, Bishop James L. Whitehead Jr. would assign an acronym for the instructions. That acronym, P-O-W. The military calls it prisoners of war, but Bishop James L. Whitehead Jr. called it P for pray three times a day and read the word of God. O for obeying God's word and the shepherd he has placed at your feet. W for wait. I say wait on the Lord. He may not come when you want him, but God is always on time. Yes, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice as God and the angels in heaven rejoice as my bishop, James L. Whitehead, Jr., shout and praise his way into the heavenly gates. I see you, Bishop. I see you shouting. We'll meet you one day. God bless you. Thank you. Come on, everybody say praise God. Awesome job. Wonderful job from her heart. We're going to have a question from the family. Have Pastor Arnold shared missionary Dolly Thurman, uh, Abram Brown, Ala Brown. Did I say it right? Yeah, you know who you are. James L. Whitehead the third. Let's say man as they come in that order. about 1966 the drum beat goes out to the family something like this Jack is preaching at Elmwood the whole family comes together shows up at Elmwood to crowd the balcony because there was no seating on the floor and uh, my 
illustrious friend and bishop, uh, James L. Whitehead, would start a scripture and then he'd say, isn't that right? And then he would explode into the scripture, something like this. He said, I would bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. We all love you. We're praying for the family. And we're trusting God to give us strength in this hour of trial. God bless you. As I was remembering my cousin, the poet Henry Wadsworth, Wadsworth Longfellow came to mind. And his poem entitled, Footprints on the Sand of Time. The life of Bishop James L. Whitehead can remind us, just as the poet said, that our lives, we can make our lives sublime, which means we can make our lives worthwhile. And when we depart this earth for our heavenly home, we can leave footprints on the sands of time. Footprints that another traveler can see. One may be shipwrecked and not able to gather themselves, but seeing the footprints will gather his physical and emotional self around him and take heart again. Thus, this was the life of Bishop Whitehead. He left footprints for each stage of our lives. Footprints to the senior members of our family. He would say, fight, and don't let the devil win, because he can never win. To the young adult, he would say, Get your education, but put Jesus first. Bishop was an educated man with several degrees, but his footprint was not about his degrees. He was, he was never a man that flaunted his education, but you knew he had it by the way he conducted himself. Now, to the young black man, let me not go there yet. <laughs> To his specialty age group, ages 12 through 19 or 20, this was his specialty group, he would say to you, know who you are and whose you are. To the young women in that group, he would say, his footprint reads, look in the mirror and say to yourself, I am somebody. I am beautiful, and I know God loves me, and I will not allow anyone to use me because I am somebody. Which, and to the young black man, his footprint reads, get married and build a stabilized home with Jesus as a cornerstone. He would say, don't hit and run and leave your package behind, because this would affect generations to come. <laughs> At the age of 24, Bishop became a, a specialty in the age group of 12 to 19. He slept in the church, and as Mother Mason has said, many times in her home and in Mother Davis's home. He drove a car that had holes in the bottom. Now I want you to know this was an educated man. He could have worked anywhere he wanted to work 
and earned any amount of money he wanted to earn. But he was dedicated to the youth of our day. At age 24, he rounded up the youth in Willowron, and he brought them to church and formulated a choir that was known throughout Michigan. As a young pastor at St. City Church of God in Christ, he further worked with the young adults. He made sure when they got saved that they were not left alone. I remember because he brought me along with him. We would go to Dr. Martha Taylor's home. I don't know whether she remembers this or not. When she lived on Hamilton. And in her backyard, I mean, this is like, I have worked all day long. And he says, come on, darling, we got to go. <laughs> I'm saying, where? <laughs> he says, we are picking up some young adults who got saved. And we don't want them to go back into the world tomorrow. So we're going to have a picnic for them. He would go out and he would buy the food. And I won't say he cooked the food. But he, he would buy the food. And he would encourage the young adults so that they could stay saved and sanctified for the Lord. Then as a jurisdictional bishop, he was yet dedicated to the youth of our day. Think of all, the, I can think of all the times that he invested money to have all kinds of activities for the youth because he was concerned about their welfare. So yes, family, let us remember the Bishop James L. Whitehead has his footprint endeavored in each of our hearts and in different ways. But let us try to fulfill the hopes and dreams he had for each of us by leaving our positive footprints on the sands of time. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. I'm standing here with my brother. We are the first two grandchildren of the pack. Um, I remember for so many years, I don't think there was a time where I didn't see my grandfather. Um, frequently, we would be at his house, on the road with him. Well, me, I was on the road with him. I traveled everywhere with my grandfather over the summertime. I was there every day or after school during the school year, I was there every day. And I'm thankful that I got to experience my grandfather in his younger years because he gave us, well, he gave us time throughout his entire life, no matter what was going on. He never didn't have time for us. And I thank God for such a great man, one of the greatest men I've ever known. To stand here today, I am proof, and we all are proof and the result of the fruits of his labor, the many years that he's worked, the many times he sat down in the office after hours, two, three in the morning, having conversations with couples or people of the church or the young people to have a conversation about holiness and purity and what you need to do about finance, about your home life, about your job, about education. And during this time, as we're mourning, we're blessed to be able to hear the stories that we may not have known before about my grandfather, but we did see it in the man that he was. I'm thankful for the many three-hour conversations and lectures, as we like to say. You call us in the living room or any time of the day, I need to talk to you. I need you to sit right there. Or he'll call us. Uh, in the morning, ain't nobody in my house sleeping at 9 a.m. Get up. Come on, get up. And then he'll call me and say, uh, Lana, we got work to do today. I'm saying, what, what you talking about? What are we doing? It's a Saturday. I'm supposed to be free. I got from school and practice. I'm supposed to be sitting down. He's like, nah, I got some work for you. How much money are you trying to make today? <laughs> I'm 
through those many times, he taught me how to negotiate. He taught me how to get more for less. <laughs> he was a great grandfather, and I'm thankful for him. I'm thankful for all the lessons, all the times he took me along the road. There was this time, me and Shekinah, we were going to AIM. I think it was uh, Kansas City. Oh, God. <laughs> and me and Shekinah, as usual, were wrestling in the back, and he pulls over on the side of the road, just... Whew, Get out the car. I said, what? what's going on? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, you know you got to apologize real quick. He said, Alana, when we get to this hotel, you're going to write a hundred times, I will not hug. I said, what? I'm not supposed to show emotion. I will not hug. <laughs> but even in those times where he showed punishment, he was still being funny. Because he thought it was funny. <laughs> but I'm thankful and I'm blessed to have a man like him taking us out, seeing our monster truck derby. I don't know if you guys know about that. He took us way out in the country. I don't even, I think it's near our grandmother's house, Milan, Michigan. And you know, my grandfather loved to eat. Food was his friend. <laughs> oh, and he loved Nathan's hot dogs. That's the first thing he found when we got to the carnival. Uh, we gonna get our food first and then we gonna sit down. <laughs> but I'm thankful that he spent time with us. I'm thankful for that because not everybody has that opportunity to spend time with their grandparents and sit down and glean from them and learn from them. And sometimes he just wanted to see us calling us down, come get this remote. Later on I realized it wasn't that he was just asking us to grab something, but my grandfather's affection was different. He just wanted to see us. We moving around, going different places. We're growing up, but he made sure he was there and he was present, whether it was a phone call. After this, I'm done. Um, one of my greatest moments I've had with my grandfather was we were, he was uh, officiating a funeral. We went to the grave site and they were having a prayer. And afterwards, he called me over to the car. He said, come here. So I leaned against the car, and he's like, I watched you preach. He said, I watched you preach. I'm proud of you. <laughs> he said, after he gave his, me his uh, notes on what I need to do better, he said, I need you to do a mm -mm -mm here. I need you to ah, give me some right here at the end, but I need you to do a one, two, one, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. <laughs> Listen, but he was serious, but it helped me. <laughs> it helped me. And I thank God that he was able to say to his granddaughter that he was proud of her. Even though he wasn't a man that didn't say that, he was. He was. He'll tell you. And here's my brother. What I can say also about my grandfather was... Um, Growing up with him every Saturday, we would go get to breakfast. Everyone would call him superintendent. Everyone called him pastor to the point where he didn't even have to order the food. They already had it at the table when he got there. Also, growing up, he always said, number one thing we do is take care of family. He said, without family, I wouldn't have anything, especially your grandmother because you know I'm stubborn. He said, "Us whiteheads is, is, is some, some difficult people. I said, well, I know. He said, what do you mean? I said, nothing, 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 nothing. <laughs> but he will always, he was the strongest person. He'll have gout. The, the, tea, the doctor said, don't eat fish, don't eat spaghetti. One thing he did was eat a big giant glass of orange pop. With ice all the way up to the top with a plate of spaghetti and chicken. <laughs> he, said, he said, my grandma, my mother ate bad all her life. She lived longer than me. He said, that's not gonna take me out. But he always said, when I very first introduced him to my fiance, he said, oh, you gonna marry her by the end of the year? I said, you crazy. It's, I, can't, I can't even go that far. It's, it's too early. He said, nah, I just know. Because look how I got your mother. He always called my grandma your mother. He said, she's a fox. She's a fox. <laughs> and he used to randomly call her name, Molly. Yeah, you see that? 
Yeah, that's a fox. <laughs> but he said, I can tell that the woman that you have is going to be by your side. I believed him, but I'm like, the marriage is still kind of far-fetched. But when I told him I proposed, he said, what I say? I told you. I told you. He said, now look, before your wedding, I'm going to bet you $1,000. You better not get one kiss in before the ceremony is over. <laughs> I said, no, I, I won't do that. I'll wait until the reception. I, I look at you. <laughs> but I always remember the lessons and he always taught me. At the end of the day, have multiple jobs. I wouldn't have seven is what he used to say, but I always, he always said, have money coming in to make sure you always take care of your wife. He always took care of my grandma to the very end. Even though he wasn't thinking all the way straight, he always said, Molly's gonna always be great, always be taken care of. And that's what I'm always listening. Let's say amen to the family that have expressed their love uh, for their grandfather, their uh, pastor, and uh, what an awesome, awesome display of God's people tonight and love that has been shown in this place. But you're sitting awfully quietly. This is the holiness church. This is the church of God in Christ, known Okay, while the choir is getting ready to come to us and sing, we're going to hear from our elder, is it elder, elder Whitehead. This is my friend. Come on. You guys pray for me. This is my first time seeing my father since he has uh, gone to be with the Lord. So I'm uh, in my spirit is almost, I'm not a crying individual, but I feel like screaming right now. But the spirit of God is upon me because of his life that he has lived. For all of us. I've never seen my father. Uh, all of, This just goes to show you how much my father loved people. And that comes from the, the love that my grandfather has passed on to him. So you feel you are the epitome of the love of Jesus Christ. And it shows by you guys being here. And with God, all things are possible. Everything can happen. Now I sit here and I have my, uh, I'm James Lee Whitehead the third. He is junior. Uh, I have James Lee Whitehead the fourth behind me. And I have Jacob Whitehead to my left and I had my, my auntie had to let me know that and my wife is oh next to me she behind me she behind me even when I don't even realize it but God has been good to me if my sons see him, they'll know that the love I have for your mother comes from his love for my mother. And he showed me how to love your wife. And he's loved her, my mother. Ooh, they've been, they'll be married almost 50 years. And when I see you, Mom, I know that my dad loved you with an unbreakable love. 
a love that is true to all generations. See, we all sit here and we think that we can cut off love and we can put it in our back pocket and we can act like it doesn't exist. But when the love of Jesus Christ enters in, you get captivated. You get moved by it. You can't understand why you feel the way you feel. My father used to tell me, he used to give me stories. And he used to tell me uh, the day he met my mother. And he said that he came to church and sat, he was, he came in and sat down at the back. And then my mother came to him and said, would you like a tea ticket? <laughs> and he said he fell in love right then and there. <laughs> and that tea ticket changed my life. <laughs> it made me whole. It put me on this earth. I always tease my little sisters because uh, uh, I always call them to themselves. I say, y'all ain't nothing but mistake babies. <laughs> I always mess with them because I, I knew that my mom went to my dad and said, I want to have a son. <laughs> and that's how I got here. I guess the joy of the Lord was our strength at the end of the day. But he did a great job for us. My dad raised me hard. I look at my son and I tell him that he was raising me hard and I'm raising you hard because I want you to be able to survive anything. I remember oversleeping because I have been a sick child my whole life. And I'd be sitting there and I'm asleep, sleep with no undershirt. And my dad came in, I told you to get up. And I'm looking like, when the way I heard the voice, and he took the pitcher of ice water and threw it right on my neck and behind. I said, what in the world? And then he left, he, he let me know, I told you to get up. I said, don't nobody care if you sick, but you better show up. And he was hard on me. And so I try to be, I love hard on my wife. I love my wife. There's nothing I won't do for her. She don't know how much I love her yet. She gonna really find out. The last thing I want to say is my sister Shekinah, me and Shekinah are really close. Our birthdays are eight days apart. And I still remember the day that my dad sat me down at the table and he said, uh, I got something to tell you, son. I said, what you about to tell me? I knew my dad was up to something because I know his nature. He said, uh, your, your mama is pregnant. I looked at him, I said, you gotta be lying. <laughs> I said, ain't no way. And he said, then he said to me, he said, I wanna tell you that if your, if the child is not gonna help your mama, she was gonna, I don't want her, my mo your mother to lose her life said, we might have to get rid of the child. And I looked at my dad, I said, no, you're not. You do the crime, you gotta do the time. <laughs> and I promised to myself that I'd be the best brother I could be for her. And I love my little sister. I love my older sister. 
it's nothing that they can do that can take away my affection for my family. And my mother, I commend you because you are the reason I'm here today. If you didn't fight for me and bring me up to my dad, I wouldn't even be here. And so these are the first, these two boys here are the first brothers in five or six generations of whiteheads. Ain't none of us had a brother. I've had tons of brothers, but my brothers is all church-related brothers. But they can change, they can change kidneys and all that stuff. <laughs> and I, and I, I enjoy it because I didn't grow up with a natural brother that could give me a kidney if I needed one. But I look at my two sons and I tell my sons, you take care of your brother. So when you get older, you'll be able to look at each other and be who God called you to be in these last and evil days. Pray my strength and the Lord. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Let's hear from the choir. No longer bound, no more chains holding me. My soul is resting, and it's a blessing. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. It's a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am free. Do I have a witness in here? Come on, any free people, can you help me say, I am free. I am free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. Oh, because I'm down. No Before you, Jesus, so we praise you. Free, yeah, I'm free. Free, I'm free. Oh yes, I'm free. Do I have anybody that's free today? Free, I'm free. 
Oh yes, I'm free. It's because of the blood. Because of the blood, I'm free. They put nails in his hands and nails in his feet. He was pierced in his side. I'm free. Free. Oh yes, I'm free. Oh yes, I'm free. I'm free because of the blood. The blood of Jesus that washed me white as snow. I'm free. Said I. Yes, I'm free. Oh, yes, I'm free. Do I have anybody that's free today? Oh, yes. Said it's in him. Oh, oh it's in him we move. And we have our being. Come on, can I get a witness? Is there anybody free? In him we move. In him we move. In him we have our peace. Somebody say, I am. Is anybody free? Anybody, anybody free? It's in him we move. And it's in him that we have our peace. Somebody say, I am. Yeah. In him we live. In him we live. And it's in him that we move. In him we move. And it's in him that we have our being. Anybody free? Anybody free? I will bless my Lord. I will give you glory. I will lift my hands and bless your name. Yes, I will. Oh, praise him. Praise him. I need to give you glory, praise him. Lord, we come to bless your name. We come to honor you, Jesus. Let me give you the fruit of our lips. Oh, praise him. Praise, praise him.
Come on, if you breathe, give God a praise. Hallelujah! Come on, hallelujah! Give him a praise. For whom the Son hath set free is free indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank the Lord for setting me free. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm free. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We certainly have enjoyed the choir. How about Sunday? Hey, Shata. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And nobody like Jesus. Nobody can save. Nobody can heal. Nobody can deliver. Nobody like Jesus. Tell him thank you. Tell the Lord thank you. Tell the Lord thank you. Tell the Lord thank you. You've been good. You've been a mighty good God. My soul love you. My soul love you. My soul love you. All right. Woo! Praise God. Now we've got to move right along. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. It's all right now. Somebody say it's all right now. I feel his presence. I know he's in the room. Say yeah. to move on we got to move on the, the hour the hour is far spent we're going to hear from the women's department of southwest second jurisdiction the department of women jurisdictional supervisor mother josie bell we're going to hear from the jurisdictional aim family from pastor stephen williams the board of district superintendents and the superintendent Henderson, the jurisdictional council of pastors and elders, Pastor Otha Harris. Come on in that order. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, Bishop, you wrong as two left shoes. You wrong for this. Hey! Hey! Nobody like Jesus. Nobody like him. Search all over. Can't find nobody. Say yeah! Nobody like Jesus. My lifter.
but guess what? We, we, we are up and out here uh, somewhere about 9 o'clock tomorrow. So, <laughs> hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It was a good place to put me up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've been sitting here watching my bishop ever since I got here. Amen. Uh, we are asking for our second assistant supervisor to please make her way up here. And where's Bessie Stallworth, our women department treasurer? Uh, no. Is she going to stay down there? Okay. And, and ladies, please let us adhere to the time limit we were told, okay? Because we've already almost shouted half of it out, all right? But, but let us kind of get through this one, all right? To God be the glory. Revelation 14 and 13 says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead that die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. We're going to give greetings and reverence to all of the pulpit guests, to all of our bishops, and to, of course, a blessings to you today. And to all of the Whitehead family, Lady Molly Ann Cannon Whitehead, to the children, his one and only sister, Madam LaBarbera Whitehead, Elder Jack, and I can't see behind all these beautiful flowers, and Sister Shekinah. No, let me back up to Elder, 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 I don't want to call you Jack. A bishop told me one time, say, all of his friends called me Jack. I didn't know him as Jack Whitehead. I wasn't back in that era. To Elder James and to Kill. District Missionary Gwen and Dr. Avery, Sister Shekinah and Brother Caleb, and to all of the Whitehead family. We're here to celebrate his home going. The home going, we call him as a giant. A goat, they say. That's, that's what he was. A preacher, my God. A trainer and a mentor. John P. Key write a, wrote a song that says, I'm living this life to live again. That's all what our Bishop Whitehead has just done. He just did that. My bishop was more than just a jurisdictional bishop. He was a father to many as well. Lady Molly, my bishop used to stand and he would Every time he was standing, I know people would be just looking. He said, I love Josie. I've always loved Josie. Perhaps what most of you don't know is, from the time I came into the jurisdiction, Bishop and Mother Curtis were, were buddies. Mother Curtis became the jurisdictional supervisor, and she was a member of Bishop Whitehead's church. Those two got together and ganged up on me. Mother Curtis had me on her wing since I got saved when I came into New Jerusalem. And she was determined to mentor me and train me to be right where I am now. And her and my bishop got together and they worked that thing and they worked it. And you don't understand, I couldn't, I used to be a shouter. I could pick, a, pick, a, pick them up and put them down. But, but when I became a district missionary and I would have to sit by Mother Curtis, Mother wouldn't let, when I became the assistant supervisor, she wouldn't let me shout. And especially if I had to speak, she would sit right by me. And when I would get up, she said, sit down, Joseph. And I would sit there. She never would let me shout because she didn't like to shout. She wouldn't let me shout. 
So they, I didn't know they was training me not to be a wild shouter. I, I just like to praise God. You sit down, Josie. I remember when he was prepping me for his supervisor before he even announced that I would be his next supervisor, before I was even installed as a jurisdictional supervisor. We had a, we had a team that we would go from church to church. Now, all of you all know Bishop Whitehead was a praying man, and he loved to go to churches. And he, he taught love. He said, it's going to be a love jurisdiction. And we would go from church to church, and we would be praying in the churches for the pastor, and we would come out of the church, and Bishop would call me to the back of my car. And he would say, Josie, now I want you to stop being a warrior for Mother Curtis, because while Mother Curtis was ser ser serving, I was warring for her. I was her, I was her, I was her butt man woman. Nobody got near Mother Curtis. They had to come past me. And, I, and, I, and he said, I'll watch you fight for Mother Curtis. He said, now I want you to take off your war garments. This man was a, he, he, he was a trainer, if you would listen to him. And he said, I, I, I don't want you worn anymore. He said, now Mother Curtis has done a job well done. Now I need you to be motherly. I, I, I wasn't motherly back then. I, I, was a, I, was, I was standing out in front of Mother Curtis like a soldier. No, I want you to be motherly now, he would say. He, and guess what else he told me? He said, I'm going to be the one fight for you. And I'm like, okay, Bishop. So I told somebody the day I said, Mother Curtis is gone. And now my bishop is gone. Who's going to fight for me? Somebody looked at me and said, you got somebody fighting for you. But I loved my Bishop Whitehead. I didn't care what he asked me to do, that I did. He would tell me, Josie, before you do anything, so now, ladies, you know why every time I would come to you, everything would be already settled. He said, before you go tell the women to do anything, you come to me first. So you know how it is, and you get to tell it, and you a new person on the bike, people walk back to your, run back to your bishop and tell him, he would already know what I've said. Whatever he said, I didn't miss a thing. Now I must say that my bishop had another request, and I consider making it happen. But Chief Brown said to me, Mother, if you do that, about four big adjutants will pick you up and take you out of here. Okay. I would say to the family, cry if you want to, because I am. Because you're going to miss him. I am. But you just remember that the Bible said, weeping may endure for a night, but tell somebody in the morning joy. And Hebrew 9 and 27 says, it is appointed unto man once to die. But after that comes the judgment. So this was my bishop appointed time. And I won't, I won't have, you, you and myself, neither one, won't have control over what God has appointed. But we don't have to control over that. Please know, Whitehead family, that we, Michigan Southwest Second Jurisdiction, love you and we are praying for you. And if you need us for anything, just call us. Now, before I take my seat, let me tell you Bishop's request. And, and, and don't be surprised now if Michigan Southwest Second Jurisdiction don't have a bottle of Orange Crush somewhere in their purses or their pockets. My Bishop request was, I want a bottle of orange pop, orange juice, or in my coffin with me when I go. And, and so, I was planning, listen, we were planning on just kind of sneaking one under the, and, and the word went out, watch Mother Bell. Don't let her nowhere near the casket. That was his request. So I just figured we would kind of honor my bishop's last request. But they got an eye out on the supervisor. Don't let her near the casket. 
And at this time, we're going to call for our, our secretary to come. No, I think I want our second assistant supervisor to just come and just to give you uh, uh, just a word of condolence. Now, ladies, don't forget the, the talk we had. Hallelujah. All, I only need one minute. What more can be said? What more could Bishop have done? What more could he have done? I don't think he could have done anything else. Let us just applaud him right now. I tell you, when I, every time I used to see him, he had that genuine smile, that smile that was contagious. If you was frowning, you would just start smiling. Truly to Mother, Lady Mother Whitehead and to the Whitehead family, I do give you my sincere condolences. And as Mother Whitehead knows, I loved my bishop. And Mother Whitehead said he loved me too. And love is an action word. And I, and I tell you, he leaves a great example for us all. He would say to the district missionaries, now don't just show up on the district missionary day. Show up on the superintendent day also. Did he not say that? Oh, yes, he did. And he would say to the superintendents, now don't just show up on the superintendent day. He wanted us all to support each other and that's what we did we supported each other and we loved each other we are a close-knitted church family it was because of his love that he put in that he placed into this jurisdiction we are now filled with that love and we will carry out that love to each other pray for me god bless you someone give star worth now that is his long, that is the only person in our jurisdiction that Bishop brought up and sat behind me and said, this is her special seat. Where are you, Stallworth? That's his friend. Uh, hello, uh, Stallworth. That's the work that I've done. Speak for me. Bless her dear heart. And at this time, we're going to ask our secretary to come and read your condolences. Women's Department, Michigan Southwest, Second Jurisdiction, Church of God in Christ. Comfort, O Graham. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, the spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. To the family of Bishop James Lee Whitehead, Jr., wait on the Lord, be of good courage, 
he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Our hearts were saddened when we heard of the passing of Bishop James Lee Whitehead, Jr. We thank God for his life in years of dedicated, devoted, and loyal service to his family, the church, and community. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. We hope it comforts you to know that God is with you every moment because God has promised never to leave nor forsake us. He is a God of comfort, and he's a very present help in the time of trouble. Be assured that the Women's Department of Michigan Southwest Second Jurisdiction extends our condolence, our prayers and thoughts to you during this difficult time. May God bless and keep you in his care. The Women's Department, where the Mother Josie Bell serve as the jurisdictional supervisor of women. And as we leave, Lady Molly, uh, on tomorrow we will have something to put in your hand to make you feel a little bit better, okay? They said money answers all things, and we do want to make you feel better on tomorrow. Now, if I was to sing a song on my way to my seat, it, no, it ain't going to happen. It, it's going to say, when you hear my home going, don't worry about me. I've made preparation, and, and, and I'm just ready to go. Amen. Bless you all on today. Thank you, Mother. Josie Bell, supervisor. And we honor God for all of you that are here tonight. I, I want to just say this, that 9 o'clock in the morning is going to come awfully quick for this family. And all of us still have proclamations. We have resolutions. We got enough to take us for another hour. And then when we bring you up, you're going to bring somebody else up. And as a result, we'll be here half the night. But this load is going to rest on the shoulders of this family. And we have expressed our love to them. And we have prayed for them. And we're yet praying. But we're going to have to move quickly to be able to let them out at a respectable time. They have to go home. They have to get some rest. Am I right, somebody? So if we did not call your name, if we, if we overlooked something you were going to say, just give it to them. Hand it to them tomorrow or after, on their way out. Just give them the paper, the letter, the resolution, whatever you were going to say. They know you love them because you have stayed here this long to support them. I'm going to ask that we would just skip right on through and we're going to have our Bishop Don W. Shelby come with a resolution. And with this resolution, after we have heard from this resolution, we have a general board member here all the way from St. Louis, Missouri, one of the great men of our church. He's going to come and have words and then we're going to come back with the benediction. Let's say amen. Amen. Can we say amen again? Amen. amen. In respect of time, I'm going to ask all of the Michigan, Ontario bishops to stand. All of the Michigan, Ontario bishops, if you would stand. And Bishop Avernus Johnson, if you would come and stand with me, please, because I'm going to have you to deliver this resolution to the family. From the Michigan Canadian Council of Bishops, Bishop James Lee Whitehead, Jr., for all of his distinguished services to the Church of God in Christ. It is given from our chairman, the presiding bishop, Bishop J. Drew Sheard, our vice chairman, general board member, Bishop Michael Hill, executive secretary, Bishop Percy W. Henderson, 
Auxiliary Bishop Philip Jackson, the Treasurer, Bishop Roger L. Jones, Bishop Dwight E. Walls, Bishop Samuel Duncan, Bishop James Atterbury, myself, Bishop Shelby, Bishop Aaron Milton, Bishop Melvin Burton, Bishop Zachary Hicks, Bishop Marcus Ways, Bishop Charles Johnson, Bishop Earl Wright, Bishop Earl Lester Earl Johnson, Bishop Glenn Plummer, Bishop Joe O. Wilkins, Wilkins, Bishop Welton Lawrence, Auxiliary Bishop Darren Burns, Auxiliary Bishop Jerry Gibbons, Auxiliary Bishop Fred Cunningham, Auxiliary Bishop Christopher Martin, Auxiliary Bishop Lester Evans, Auxiliary Bishop Robert Dean, Auxiliary Bishop Robert Garner, Auxiliary Bishop Ethan Sheard, and Auxiliary Bishop Alvernus Johnson. A beautiful plaque for the family. They say amen. God bless you, Mr. Jackson. Go ahead, sir. Let me just set this. We have the supervisors from Michigan, Ontario, uh, and they're here represented, and uh, they do have a resolution. And uh, Bishop, if you will, we're going to allow our sister, Mother Claritha Spencer, to come with the resolution along with our mother, Regina Rose Edwards, and their cabinet. What we're trying to do is release this family. God is a God of all comfort, who will comfort you in any trouble, that you may be able to comfort others. God bless you on behalf of Mother Mary Jane Walter, all of these fine men that are here, I love you all, but I just want you all to know they told us three minutes, and that's all I'm taking. So I want you all to know I love you, all supervisors and assistants, if you would just stand at this time. The bishop's wives have already stood. If any of them are left, any assistant supervisors. All right. God bless you. We thank you so much for your kindness. But on behalf of Mother Mary Jane Walter, who is our area chairperson in this area, we want you to know that we love you, Mother Molly. We're praying for you, and we have something for you. God bless you, but listen to our executive secretary, and you make sure you tell Mother Walton I only took one minute. And I'm not going to read this. We recognize the time, but we did not want to not stand. Lady Molly Whitehead is a part also of our unit. A lot of you may not know, but she is a special assistant supervisor, and it would be terrible if we didn't get up and let you know how much we love you and we're praying. I'm not going to read it because of time. And as mother said, on tomorrow, we will have a love token on for you. God bless you. Thank you, mother. We're not going to have the choir. We're going to sing on our way home. Amen. We're honored to have such a great esteemed leader here with us, the general board member. He's going to come with our final remarks and our dismissal. If anyone uh, feel like they were slighted, I pray for you. Uh, and if you feel like anybody you want to point the finger at, point it at me. Uh, because I'm trying to protect the family. God bless you. Let's say amen to Bishop. God bless you. Come on and let's give Bishop Jackson a great big hand and let's say praise the Lord everybody for the life of this tremendous man of God, Bishop Whitehead. The house has already been addressed and we're getting ready to go home to prepare ourselves for the celebration of life tomorrow. But definitely we honor Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who is the strength of our life. And to our esteemed presiding bishop, the Bishop J. Drew Sheard. And to this wonderful host pastor, Bishop Don W. Shelby, and all the great leaders that are here today. Today, truly, we give tribute to one of the greatest preachers that the world has ever seen, not just in the church of God in Christ, but that the world has ever seen. 
The world is a better place because Bishop Whitehead passed this way. And we thank God for his teaching. We thank God for his example. And we thank God also for his mentorship. But I'm here tonight just not just to honor his memory, but also to stand with his wonderful wife, uh, Lady Whitehead. Let's give her a great big hand for standing by his side all of those years. We honor you today, woman of God. We honor you today. That's it. Clap your hands and praise God for her. You and I are in a very similar situation. And I want you to know, like the songwriter said, you can make it. Truly, I appreciate you because during the time that I served as the former president of the International Department of Evangelism, you went to Bishop Whitehead, your beloved husband, and got his permission to be able to serve in the Department of Evangelism. And truly, you've been faithful. And I want to say to you that, yes, this may be the most difficult time of your life, but don't let the flame of evangelism ever go out. You have a job to do for the Lord, and God has you. He has you covered, and he's going to carry you through this difficult time. As we leave out getting ready to sing, our way out everybody's standing the late bishop cp jones uh penned this song that said i will make the darkness light before you and whatever is wrong i will make it right before you god is standing by your side and beside this entire family we're going to pray and get ready to go directly from here please do not leave out the door right now without the benediction we want everybody to stop as we prepare to leave out from